Hello, this is Pracker, and you're my... Void? Windows 7, one of the most beloved Windows versions ever. This operating system, despite not being updated for like 5 years, is still used by millions, millions of people. But why? Well, some people say it's because it looks better, but really the main reason is stability and the speed compared to the Windows 10 and above. So that made me wonder, if Windows 7 is such fast OS, what will it even be like if I install it on my main gaming computer with RTX graphics card and 40 gigs of RAM? Now, majority of people are gonna type in the comments like, why not use Linux? And you're right. If you know how to use Linux, uh, it's a really great operating system, but you know, for a lot of people, Windows is still the king, you know, uh, it's still much easier to use, and it is much easier to install. What the? What's going on? Yeah, so we might have some problem. Yeah, so uh, we might have some problems when installing 7 on a fresh new computer of the store. You see, um, in a simple terms, any modern computer use the boot sequence called UFI, and that is used to boot uh, operating systems like Windows or Linux, right? Now, 7 does support UFI, the problem is that it supports very old version of it, and the new version that my motherboard and every modern motherboard uses isn't exactly properly backwards compatible with it, uh, which makes Windows 7 install freeze. Now how do we fix it then? Well, if you go to BIOS settings and find the option CCM and enable it, it will essentially turn on sort of like backwards compatibility of older boot sequences like UFile or legacy bias, but we will still have some problems either way. Uh, specifically, the fact that we can't use keyboard or mouse. That is because Windows 7 ISO doesn't come with USB free drivers, not to mention even if we do connect something like PS2 or, you know, a keyboard, PS2 keyboard, we won't able to proceed the installation because, one, USB still don't work, so it can't exactly pull the data from our USB stick, and two, NVMe drivers are not present in Windows 7 ISO by default, so we can't install it on our fresh, fast M.2 NVMe drive. So what do we do then now? Now, despite the fact that the newest Windows 7 ISO doesn't exactly come with USB 3 and M.2 drivers, Microsoft did make those officially, and even distributed them through Windows Update, but, you know, they never updated their ISO to include it uh, in their Microsoft websites, uh, which is most likely has to do with the fact that they push people to use Windows 10, which we'll get to that topic in a second. So, to get those drivers into Windows 7 ISO, we need to use a program called NT Lite, right? Uh, where we unpack the ISO, we select the folder in NT Lite, and we wanna basically uh, throw the drivers into Windows 7, and uh, we gotta throw these drivers into the boot, boot installation sequence so that we can, you know, control our USB uh, mouse and keyboard in installation sequence and throw the Windows 7 install into M.2 drive. And really, that's it. After that, we can effortlessly go through, the, uh, through Windows 7 installation like normal. Are you guys ready to see how fast this thing boots? It's crazy. It, 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 it's, it, it's insane. You just gotta see this. Believe me. It boots so fast. It's so fast. Holy sh... Okay, so essentially what I did afterwards is uh, very simple stuff. I just uh, went ahead, I installed a proper browser. This is Supermium, basically a Chrome port for Windows 7, XP, 2000, and other older Windows operating systems, and I basically just went ahead, you know, and I just downloaded drivers. 
Now my GPU is RTX 3060 and believe it or not, but 30 series is actually the last that have Windows 7 drivers, so you can get Windows 7 drivers for RTX 3090 Ti, which makes it probably the most powerful graphics card that is supported by Windows 7, which is really, really cool. Though I had one issue, uh, the latest driver just didn't install because it for some reason wasn't signed, so what I did is I went to the older versions and like found the one that said uh, here it is, the last game ready driver. I, ins I downloaded that and that just worked. I don't know what's up with these ones, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really weird. As for everything else, you know, my motherboard, uh, basically I opened device manager and I selected the unknown devices. There are currently no unknown devices because I already installed the drivers, but basically I clicked on unknown drivers like that, clicked on properties, uh, properties, and I searched here for device ID and I basically copied that and pasted it into Google search and that gave me a ton of drivers and I picked uh, each uh, each of them I can find uh, till I find the one that works. What the fuck is going on with this cross, bro? And after that, customizability. I put a Windows taskbar on the left because that makes me feel like a sick. I installed the basic stuff like uh, for recording programs, OBS for games, older version of Steam that works with Windows 7, uh, EA app that works on 7s for some reason. Uh, Discord, older version of it, Telegram, the newest version still supports Windows 7. Uh, for editing, I use Vegas Pro 14, that works on 7, unsurprisingly, and I'm actually editing the video as we speak. So, yeah, the programs I use, for the most part, work just fine. I repaired Windows 7 update to get, you know, the latest security patches, but uh, I, when I was doing that, <laughs> I got hit with this error, okay? Unsupported hardware. But I got all the drivers for my system, what do you mean? Your system will miss important security updates? What the f- Remember when I said that Microsoft was pushing people to use Windows 10 similar to uh, how they are trying to do this with Windows 11? Yeah, this is one of those things, so despite the fact that AMD wrote the drivers for majority of AIM4 motherboards, uh, making Ryzen processors from 1000 to 5000 series essentially compatible with Windows 7, um, Microsoft did not agree with this whatsoever, so they basically implemented uh, a CPU blacklist in some Windows update, that basically breaks the ability to get any more security patches forcing uh, users to update to Windows 10. You know, this kind of reminds me of how Microsoft blocks Windows updates uh, on Windows 11 uh, so that it will force people to, you know, upgrade their hardware. Thankfully, for Windows 7, there is a community-made script that removes this blacklist, allowing for newer systems like this one to update to the latest and greatest 2020 security patches. Now, let's get to the games. Yeah, it's not really good. It's not really good for modern games, because a lot of modern games just don't support Windows 7 whatsoever. Uh, and usually you cannot exactly run uh, those games on Windows 7. There are exceptions, I'm just saying, there are exceptions. For example, for God of War, someone made a Windows 7 mod that basically... What it does, it removes the operating system check, and uh, since Windows 7 doesn't support DirectX 12, uh, it basically translates DirectX calls to Vulkan using DX2VK, and that basically allows this game to run on Windows 7. Check it out. Up. 
You've had to kill people before, haven't you? You're used to it. We do what we must to survive. Animals, I get. They're food. Draugr, they're supposed to be dead. But people, they're trying to survive too. Close your heart to it. On our journey, we will be attacked by all manner of creature. Well, yeah, it's uh, just one of the exceptions uh, that just exists somehow. Realistically, on Windows 7, you're most likely going to be playing older games. Realistically, using older OS for modern games is not a great idea whatsoever. And I know there are projects that, you know, lets you run Windows 10, Windows 10 stuff on uh, Windows 7, like VCAX. Uh, but uh, the point of this video was to see, you know, the clean Windows 7, you know? How it feels to use Windows 7 on a modern computer completely clean, because, you know, to me, modding, when you're modifying Windows 7 to run Windows 10 stuff, uh, I don't think this is Windows 7 at this point. It's just, it's just uh, some weird abomination that just exists when you mod it to do it, but that's my personal opinion. Let me, uh, let me know what you think about that. On a bright side, majority of modern indie games still work on Windows 7. Here's Pizza Tower functioning completely fine on Windows 7. Another thing that I want to try to see is emulation, because I really love looking into stuff like this. Uh, but uh, I was kind of disappointed. Uh, not, be not that it runs bad, but again, compatibility. You see, if I had a slow computer, uh, then the compatibility with emulators I would have would be completely fine to me. But uh, I'm just gonna remind you all, I'm running Ryzen 5 3600X and RTX 3060 with like 40 gigs of RAM, okay? So, obviously, emulators like N64, PS1 will run fine no matter what operating system. So, we need to step up a bit further, you know. PS2 comes in mind, but uh, a PS2 emulator doesn't support uh, Windows 7, specifically PCX2. And, uh, you know, the PlayStation 3 emulator, RPCS3, uh, it used to support Windows 7, uh, but not anymore. So, and you may ask, uh, why not just download that old version, you know, to test it? Guys, this, this is the emulator we're talking about. The emulators that will take full advantage of the hardware I'm running are most likely uh, targeting uh, newer consoles and they are updated each week or month. Uh, and each update fixes 
a lot of stuff and adds a lot of new games or fixes for games that aren't available on the older version. So it's really pointless to test it because no matter what, it will be worse on Windows 7. Uh, so really, it, 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 it's just pointless, you know. <laughs> Using older version of emulators is gonna be pointless to stay on older version of operating system. If you wanna use your hardware to emulate newer consoles like PS3, Xbox 360 to play backups of your games, Windows 7 will not be your option for better performance, unfortunately. So, the conclusion. Should you use Windows 7 on a modern computer? No, absolutely not. Windows 7 on a modern computer is really, really pointless, especially on a fast computer like mine, because the difference in performance is gonna be absolutely minimal, but the difference in usability is gonna be pretty different, in, and it's gonna be favoring Windows 10 and 11, because Windows 7 doesn't support a lot of modern features, some stuff like ray tracing, DirectX 12 doesn't work, and uh, no modern games or majority of programs that will take advantage fully of this hardware supports Windows 7. So really, if you want to use Windows 7, use it on a virtual machine. And really, the only hardware where Windows 7 is truly going to be benefiting is older hardware that runs really badly on Windows 10 and 11. Because running Windows 7 on modern hardware doesn't make sense with uh, the fact that it is no longer supported for like 5 years, meaning it's not secure, so you're just uh, giving up all the security features, all the modern features, just uh, for like a slightly faster user experience, which I think in my opinion is just not worth it. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, and if you didn't, then I guess dislike it. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think, and uh, I'll see you all on my iPad.